Where might internal misalignment be costing your financial brand millions in loans and deposits when it comes to your future digital growth potential? And are you even aware there might be misalignment internally to begin with in the first place? Let's find out together on today's episode of the Baking on Digital Growth podcast. You're listening to the Banking on Digital Growth podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Banking on Digital Growth podcast. I'm Audrey Kanata, Operations Lead here at the Digital Growth Institute. And today we're diving into a crucial conversation about how financial institutions can better align their messaging and product positioning to create value for their members. And joining me for today's conversation is James Robert Lay, founder and CEO of the Digital Growth Institute. Good to see you, Audrey. Good to share time with you as always. As always, James Robert, what has been going well for you lately? What has been going well for me? So we had a quick weekend trip away. It wasn't even a weekend. It was more like a day up to Dallas. And uh, yeah, it was a sprint. Uh, We left early Houston early in the morning. We drove out to Six Flags of Texas up in Arlington, right outside of Dallas. Got there right as the park opened about 11 o'clock in the morning with our four kids. And then we went and we rode roller coasters for about seven hours, right up until about the part time the park closed. And it was a fun field day. Uh, But I will tell you at 42, riding a roller coaster is a bit more physical than it was, say, at 22, yet alone 12 years old. Yeah. What was uh, your favorite ride? Oh, my gosh. Uh, There's Mr. Freeze. Um, It takes you from zero to 70 miles an hour in about three, three and a half seconds. Feels yep. like feels like you're on a catapult of an aircraft carrier. And I always wanted to be a naval aviator or or an air force pilot, but a naval aviator, you know, flying off the carrier deck, uh, off the catapult, just puts you back in your seat. You're going, and then you hit this vertical climb. That was the so our kids have really never ridden a roller coaster before. Yeah, that was the very first ride we all did together. We put them on all the, of you guys. All, all they even left. How did they, the little ones made it on? I'm surprised. Or they, did y'all the only one, the system a little bit? No, Luvana, Luvana was just a little bit too short, but the three three others, um, they did. And uh, it woke them up. Uh, and I said, oh, yeah. listen, this is going to be probably the most challenging ride of them all. Uh, but there's that. They had uh, the Texas Giant, which is the tallest roller coaster in the state of Texas. That will test your, that one's rickety. I can tell you that. Oh, you're talking about that Texas giant. You're talking about there, there was another one. It was the new, um, it's kind of like the Texas cyclone here in Houston when they had Astro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it uh, was wooden. It was wooden, but they actually, it's called the new, oh, what is that? Uh, I forget the name, but it was a wooden roller coaster. And that's why they put, they call it the new Texas, whatever. Um, because it's still wooden, but they actually went in and put metal rails down and the metal, the ride, because I do remember when it was wooden, it was very Mm -hmm. bumpy, like very, very bumpy, but the metal rails, this was exponentially better. It was fast, nice, steep drop to begin. Um, but no, it's a, that's a fun ride. It's even better now that it has the, the metal rails on it. Yeah. I can do the speed and and I can do a drop. The ones that terrify me are, and I think they have one at Six Flags. It's it's the hanging ones when there's nothing below you, like there's mm. nothing on your feet. Uh, you're like you're dangling there. That's where I draw the line. Okay, so there's 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 a couple. Um, I think it's Superman, maybe. It's Superman. Uh, so it's like a it'll take you up and it'll just drop you. Uh, at, oh. At, doesn't have it's not like a ride per se it'll just take you all the way up you know a couple hundred feet up in the air and it'll just drop you down and get you in a free fall state yeah i don't get the point of that so there's that yeah that's a rush um (laughs) we did not do that just because of time um yeah i will i will be honest that's the one that i have to face my own fear of um yeah i'll do it It makes me feel a little uncomfortable i'm not gonna lie uh but there's one though that i was like i'm not doing it two actually two that i was like i'm not doing it one was the joker uh, which was cause I don't do spinny. I don't spin very wow. well. I never yeah. have. I just, uh, I did get on the gunslinger, which we actually had the gunslinger at 
uh, Six Flags Asteroid in Houston. And I don't know if they moved it up there or if they just had another one. It's um, it's a swing that you get on and just go around in a circle. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, that goes back to the whole, I don't like not having things below. Like, I don't want to be hanging anywhere. It's, it's, not, even, it's not even high. Uh, it's not even fast. Like, even it's weird because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm getting nauseous just thinking about it. I do not like that feeling at all. Um, they had another one, though, and I forgot the name of the ride. It's like the Gunslinger, so it's like a swing ride, but it's a couple hundred feet up in the air. And I'm like, no, no, thank you on that one. I'm good. I don't need yeah. to prove anything to anybody. I'm at this point. If I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, let's get into today's conversation. We're going to discuss uh, a recent conversation we had uh, with a financial brand, uh, it was credit union leader, marketer, mm -hmm. and a few on his team. Uh, we were looking at a benchmark study on their website, and we discovered a few really key points and really trends and patterns uh, that I think our, our listeners would, would find very valuable. Um, and, and the very first thing we noticed, which was interesting, and this, this shows you... Um, the importance of like probing and questioning because this did not surface right away. It took a conversation for this to come out, but they had a key product benefit that was not being positioned as a, as a um, primary differentiator. Yeah. So this was massive. Uh, and it was like barely mentioned and you did one of those pause, hold on, say that again. And uh, we dove into that. So share, share with us that, that finding. Well, when we do these benchmark studies and we're continuously doing even more of these to provide clarity for financial brands truly into where they're losing millions in loans and deposits. And that's not hyperbole because we, we take the yeah. qualitative and then we begin to mix it with the quantitative once we dive deeper into their unique situation. But for this particular organization, one of the questions that I asked this group I said, why should I apply for a loan or open an account at your financial brand? And just with the small subset of these three leaders, we got three different responses. Mm -hmm. And we use this exact same question when we do a digital growth blueprint, except it's not live on a call. Um, right. It's in an actual survey. And we tend to see the same exact thing. There's a misalignment into the response to that question. And this is such an important question because how we perceive our financial brand in answering that question of why someone should apply for a loan or why someone should open an account is going to directly then translate into how we communicate. So it's positioning, it's product packaging, um, it, it's the strategy drives the tactical. And for this particular organization, they were shared three different responses, but there was one response though that was different than the other two because the other two responses were the common, well, you should open an account because we care. We care about the community. We, we have these great rates and we, our members love our service. And I'm like, blah. Service. And I think I even, I think I've been at one point, I was like, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, you did. <laughs> like tell me something I don't know and something I don't right. hear. But it was the third response that I said, stop, rewind, go back, repeat what you just said. Because what this particular leader shared was truly unique to them. And it did match the narrative of like, we care about the community, but they just had never communicated it with such clarity. It was almost like they were undervaluing the value that this particular piece of product positioning had when it came to someone applying for a loan or, or in this particular case, opening an account with them. Well, it goes back to like, I taught this when I was uh, teaching writing, show me, don't tell me. You, you, you can tell me all day that you care about me, mm -hmm. show me. And that's what this one leader did. And he shared with us is this is what we're actually doing that no one else is doing. And you know what I think it is actually, and, and we have worked with our own advisors over the years to basically ask us the same exact question. And if you go back to 2012, when David Baker came in and he pretty much asked us the exact same question, 
What makes you different? Damn, that was a hard question to answer back I still, then. I, I still want you to – I want to see what I wrote just out of curiosity. I, I, <laughs> I, think, I think I have the data uh, in Drive that I probably Might can – Might cringe, but – Probably can go dig up. But what we found back then is we were pretty much talking the same exact thing that everyone else was talking about. And we hear – the same thing from financial brands. And my hypothesis is getting an objective outside perspective to hear what you're communicating, to really hear what you're communicating and then play that back to you will yeah. show you either where you're aligned or where you're misaligned. And more likely than not, it's a misalignment. And that misalignment, particularly at a leadership level, will create ripple effects throughout the entire organization that will negatively impact positioning, product, production of content, promotion of content, which will all trickle down to performance at the end of the day. Yeah. And we actually, in a different uh, group that we met with and kind of elaborated on this, you know, they were talking about this misalignment and how, I mean, if you're not all on the same page, everyone in the organization it's not going to translate into those conversations, mm. those day-to-day -day conversations with, with members. No. Um, it's not going to be top of mind if you're not. And it, and it takes, and she actually touched on this and I love it because you don't hear it a lot. And because she was like, it has to be a constant, a constant internal communication, a constant reminder so that it can just become ingrained and second nature. Uh, for our employees to share with our members or potential account holders. Well, this is why all transformation has to begin within. Um, and it's easy to gloss over the internal human transformation that can then transpire external marketing and sales transformation from a positioning, packaging, promotion. Consistency is key. Yep. But it's also hearing and working with teams within organizations, particularly marketing, sales, and leadership teams. And when we ask them and we do our diagnostic set and we ask them, what is marketing in one word? And the vast majority will just say 90% plus respond to that, regardless of if they're in marketing or sales or leadership, they'll respond that marketing is about communication because they respond with some type of channel. Marketing is about ads, emails, social media, content, video, blah, blah, blah. No, marketing. And I think, A, we've forgotten, but B, if we can recall and redirect at the pinnacle of the marketing sales leadership pyramid, because it's really the same patterns for all three, regardless if you're talking about marketing or sales or leadership, it's influence. Yeah. And the way that we influence is through our communication. The way that we become excellent communicators is by being a really good listener. So it's listen, communicate, influence in that particular order. Yeah. And, and on that note of listening and aligning uh, internal perspectives, another interesting uh, thing that, that surfaced. And again, it was to no surprise for us because we do, we do see this a lot is of the three on our call. Um, one of them had never actually opened an account or applied for a loan at the organization. Mm. The other two who had, it had been many years and some of them had never opened an account at, um, like a fintech chime, uh, for example. So they lacked the perspective, the experience within, and then how do you communicate that out if you don't know what's going on inside first? Yeah. And, and once again, it's, it was a micro group that tends to follow the trends we see at a macro level when working with organizations in our digital growth blueprint diagnostic, because these are very similar questions that we ask is how long has it been since you applied for a loan or opened an account on your website? And the reason that we ask that question is this is about experience. Mm -hmm. What is experience? 
experience or experiences or well-defined systems and processes that have been strategically thought out, applied, and then optimized over a period of time. So great. You applied an online account opening or an online loan application three, four, five years ago. Did you strategically think it out back then? Maybe, maybe not. Did you apply it absolutely as proof that you do have this? Have you come back and optimized that over a period of time to make it even better, to identify where there are unknown gaps that are costing you loans and deposits? Based upon the work that we do, probably not. You use the word perspective. If you have not gone through that experience yourself, you do not know what it feels like. Perspective is the sum of context and framing. More importantly, if you have never applied for a loan or opened an account at a neo bank or a digital brand, digital financial brand, you don't have context of how your experience feels compared to the digital or the neo bank's experience. And the feeling and the emotion here is such a critical piece in the buying journey that I can sit here and tell you, oh, chime this and SoFi that and let's get blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter until someone has that experience and gains the perception themselves. And we know when it comes to human transformation that the, the desire transform has to be greater than the desire to maintain the status quo. Yeah. It's just, it's so interesting to me. And I don't say this to, um, to like, you know, to, to poke at or anything, but especially in in marketing. And, you know, when we ask the question, why should someone open an account with you? And you're like, so confidently saying, Oh, it's service. It's the experience. But how, how can you sell that if, if you don't know that to be tr- really and truly know that to be true because you've experienced it yourself. That's a great point. I mean, it's just fascinating to me. Well, it's a bit of pride, arrogance, and ego perhaps, but, but here's the, here's the danger I think of quote unquote banking on experience. Um, and we'll just kind of keep that in our little vernacular. Yeah. I strongly believe that in the age of AI experiences particularly digital or online mobile experiences have have the potential to be commoditized. Um, and you even starting to see that now within FinServe, like mobile apps for the most part kind of all have the same feature sets because we're reaching maturity period here. Yeah. Pretty. What happens when, what happens when experiences really are fully commoditized and there's no major differentiation between a digital or mobile banking experience. What are we left with at that point to differentiate? It's not experience. It's something deeper. It's expertise. Hmm. It's knowledge. And the argument will, isn't knowledge commoditized in the age of AI? Absolutely. Large language models have been trained on all of the knowledge that has ever been published before. What it's missing, though, is a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is commoditized. Perspective, that's the uniqueness. That's the unique element here. And the way that we unlock that perspective is by just being very curious, asking good questions, working with internal thought leaders. And if we don't have what we would perceive as an internal thought leader, we coach up thought leaders to be a positive influence in the communities that we're serving so that we can help them unlock, capture, and amplify their expertise to positively influence the beliefs and behaviors that people in the communities that we're serving around our brand, brand reputation, except it's the brand of the thought leader that in the age of AI and the age of commoditization, maybe even an experienced commoditization, it's their expertise and their ability to communicate that expertise that becomes a unique differentiator in the marketplace. Yeah. I was going to say communicate confidently. Mm -hmm. Uh, Confidence is, is so key when we think about the five stages and the five transformations of the buying journey, people enter into a buying journey, feeling some sort of confusion, complexity, 
So step number one is we have to transform that confusion and complexity into clarity. Yeah. That clarity. Especially into- in finances. Especially, and if we're not able to transform confusion and complexity into clarity, no one moves to the next level. So that 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 piece of the awareness stage, that's that's the goal, is to transform confusion into clarity. From there, in the consideration, we can transform clarity into courage, courage into commitment, commitment into confidence. That happens during the onboarding phase as we affirm and reaffirm that, yes, they have made the right decision. Because We've talked about that with Joey Coleman, the idea of the first 100 days. Never lose a customer again. Great book. So good. But once again, another unique opportunity is you transform that confidence into community. And now you have a a group of like minds who are all working towards a similar journey, which is to improve their financial health and well-being. Yeah. But like we've uncovered with this, with this conversation, this benchmark study, it, it starts with alignment. It starts with that internal alignment and many times organizations don't even realize they're not aligned. Um, And so thinking about this and and thinking about, you know, as we're continuing to try to help financial brands make progress and, and if somebody doesn't know, or if someone's looking to make, take that next step and, and okay, well, alignment, I think we're aligned. We, we do great. We have wonderful yeah, uh, annual meetings and board sessions and we're all, you know, hip, hip, hooray. How, how can, we, how can we test this benchmark this? What can somebody do to really discover and, 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 and either be confident? Yes, we are aligned um, with our communication, our messaging or, uh oh, we may have an issue here. Yeah. Um, the easiest way is just to schedule a benchmark study with us. Text us. 415-579-3002 and uh, just text benchmark to that number text benchmark to 415-579-3002 and we will go through and benchmark your website and the reason that we benchmark the website is that is where all traffic goes on a financial buying journey They might end up in a branch, yes, but there's a very high probability that they're going to visit your website first. Why? They have to find a branch location. What they see on your website, how does that make them feel? Is that making positive deposits into the trust fund that sits between their ears? Are you able to help them transform confusion into clarity? We want to do the exact same thing with website benchmark assessments. Yeah. Because – to your point about a lack of alignment, if we're not even aware that we're misaligned, if we're not even aware that we're not even speaking a common language, what's going to happen with technology? Technology is not even part of it. should not even be part of the conversation because technology is a multiplier. If you are not aligned, three things will happen. There's complexity that leads to confusion. There's confusion that leads to conflict. And when you're in a continuous state of conflict, If you're not aware of it, it is going to lead to chaos. And so step number one is just to gain some perspective, context, framing, gain some awareness into where you might be very aligned, but maybe you're misaligned as well. And that's okay. It's what we do with that knowledge that that's where the real transformation begins. And maybe you're just this close, you know, maybe you're like the organization we just spoke to where, yeah, they weren't aligned um, at first and, and their responses, but they had something there. They had something that just wasn't being fully communi- uh, communicated and utilized. I mean, so you may have some of these little golden nuggets mm. in there that, um, you know, we could help surface for you, but it does take uh a little bit of courage to take that step. Um, That's a fantastic to- point and observation. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying we need to have another conversation about a recent digital growth blueprint uh, that we did for a financial brand, because that that's a, that's a common pattern now between these two experiences, yes. whether it was a website benchmark uh, review, or in this particular case, it was a much deeper level engagement. The words that that, group of leaders said is we've been dancing around this thing yeah they they 
they perceive the opportunity, but they lack the courage to make the commitment to go down the path that they're about to go down. And a lot of it was just bringing in this objective outside perspective to either affirm or say, you know what? No, you're, you're definitely not on the right path. Because I remember when we were doing the one-on-one interviews with their leaders, you're like, huh, there's actually, cause there was, I always form a hypothesis based upon data and based upon research. But then I also want to like float that by leaders in a one-on-one situation because either I'm on the right path or you know what I'm, and I could be completely wrong. I'll be the first one to admit if I'm off, but in this particular case, similar situation, they had, they have the elements. They just never have been able to articulate and put them together in the right way. So it's not like they have a tremendous amount of work and transformation to do. It's they've been doing the right thing. It's just, that 1% angle change helps them see something in a completely new light. Right. And it's so, and I can say as, as, you know, an outsider and, and, and participating, it's so fun. These, both of these experiences for me were so fun because they had it in them. Um, You know, it wasn't like we're coming in here and giving the answer and telling, telling you what to do. And, um, they got it. like, like, and it goes back to your whole hero's journey. They, these individuals and leaders are the heroes. They just needed a little bit of help surfacing it. They had it all there the whole time. Uh, and it's just really funny, to, fun to see that unravel and come to light all together. Oh, I, I completely agree, which is where yeah. when you help people, it's the first step of human transformation. When you help people see things just a little bit differently, sometimes yeah. it's going to change form the way that they think. But just because they transform the way they think doesn't mean that they're going to do or act or be any different. What we saw in both of these experiences that really unlocked, they started to feel different. And that's the feeling that bridges the gap between the thought and the action. It's the feeling where the real transformation transpires. Yeah, really saw that confidence shift. Absolutely. This is what I kind of thought. Oh, now this is what I'm thinking. We've got this. It's exactly This has been a great... Great conversation dissecting one of our uh, recent benchmark uh, study calls. Can you give our listeners, what's that number one more time if somebody wants to reach out and schedule one of their own? Yeah, text mark, text mark, text mark, text, (laughs) text benchmark, text benchmark to 415-579-3002. And uh, we'll definitely get something scheduled with you. And um, it takes about 15, 30 minutes to go through just a high level initial overview And it's a great conversation. You walk away seeing something a little bit different. Absolutely. Thank you so much, James Robert. This has been great. Audrey, this has been a lot of fun and I can't wait to do it again. Absolutely. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of the Banking on Digital Growth Podcast. 